So these are, in a sense, specifics of how evolution works, or more precisely, specifics of how microevolution works. And we start with something called the Hardy-Weinberg theorem, or Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, this is something that was formulated at the beginning of the 20th century, the early 1900s. And uh, basically, it was just a simple mathematical formula that took a diploid population and followed it through time. And it basically said that if you didn't have evolution, then you didn't have any changes in the frequencies of alleles. And also, if you had something called random mating, you would end up having uh, the same frequency of genotypes persisting in the population um, for eternity, essentially. And in order to have this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, you had to have an absence of evolution. And that's what all of these things in the back represent. They represent what you need to not have in order to not have evolution. So you can't have mutation. And you can't have genetic drift, so it's, it's represented by this. And you can't have natural selection. And you can't have migration, whether it's in migration or, or out migration. And then this is representing an absence of, um, of uh, biases in, uh, in matings. So this gives you random mating. If anybody can mate with anybody else, it's called random mating. So those are all the bases, the assumptions, as they're called, for a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And when one studies microevolution, what one does is studies violations of the assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg theorem.